Most pianists love and have a very deep relationship with Chopin. When I play Chopin, I feel like people really listen more than any other composer. For me, it is just a really special composer. It's very close to my heart. This is such a special year, it's 2010, which is Chopin's 200th birthday, and I realized that I'm very lucky to be um, a young pianist at this time, and probably at a chance like that is you know, never going to happen again. This is uh, for the first time in my life that I am playing that much Chopin all at once. No other competition would give you such an exact replica of Warsaw. This, this is just a perfect dress rehearsal, eight months ahead of schedule. This is a very, very special uh, competition. The fact that it's only open to the U.S. citizens. At the end of the day, we are picking the best. This competition has grown tremendously in, in the last few times we've met. The level is higher. The, there's more proficiency, more professionalism about the young people coming in. Blanca Rosensteel has really founded something wonderful, and it has a very high esteem. Again, it may be, in some ways, it's a warm-up to the big Uncle. show in Warsaw. So, who is the first one? Juno Sai. Well, I was really excited to be coming back here again. I mean, you never know <laughs> with competitions, so I was really happy to come back. Daniela Bracchi? Well, I think that a huge part of the importance of this whole competition is, of course, Chopin, and this being his anniversary year. Being able to spend so much time with the music and then be around other musicians who have made that commitment, I think is very important. 13, oh, lucky number. Sean Chen. Um, actually, I was at this competition five years ago. It's a pretty big deal, I mean, especially for uh, U.S. citizens, because this is one of the only big competitions open only to U.S. citizens. Moreover, leads to the international competition if you do well in this one. That's she. I found out that I was chosen to participate after receiving a letter from the Chopin Foundation and I opened it and my dad looked over my shoulders and he whooped and clapped me on the shoulders and ran upstairs to tell my mom. Andrew Tyson? As I opened the email, I had a lot of mixed emotions when I saw that I was accepted. I was initially very delighted, but immediately anxious and stressed and fearful at the prospect of actually having to play all of the music that I said I was going to play in the application. Number two. I auditioned for the four scholarships that the National Chopin Competition has and then after I felt like I was prepared for the competition so I entered the competition and the, also the international competition. Number one. Number one, great. What order are you? I'm number nine out of 19. So, How do you feel about that? I think it could be much worse. You know, generally, a, a beginning, the earlier the number, sort of has kind of a bad luck charm to it in a way. Obviously, it's not really merited, but uh, generally, people prefer to be placed later. Because if, if, if I were 10 or later, it'd be another day, you know, so you can kind of, I guess, get a little more well acclimated to things before you're, before you're actually performing. What I hope to get out of this experience is the experience of playing, of playing Chopin in a a competitive setting, there is some pressure, obviously, because everybody here is really amazing. And to be able to handle that pressure and to play without really worrying about it and just play what I have prepared and what I'm ready to play. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the 8th National Chopin Piano Competition. Welcome B.J. Megatesh, the first contestant in our 8th National Chopin Piano Competition. 
What I hope to get out of this experience is truly just releasing my expression for Chopin. Play my heart out is what Chopin always said about his music, so I'm just gonna go out there and sing. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't really matter being first or last to me. The thing that does matter is playing at nine o'clock in the morning. That's really difficult, I think, for anybody, including the jury, to have to get there and sit at nine o'clock in the morning, but that's just my personal opinion. I was actually at this competition five years ago, and I, I placed third that time. If there was somebody that I would give advice to, it's just to focus on your own playing and play it as if, if it was your own concert and not to let the competition or the other competitors be on your mind. When I'm on stage, my music, I try to make it as exciting as possible and to bring out this kind of really exciting moment that will make audience remember it for a very long time. Every time you play on stage, you learn something new about yourself and maybe even something new about playing the piano. Um, and I mean, the jury is excellent, so I'm sure they'll have lots of interesting things to say. The future of music is in our young artists' hands. Uh, without their skills, without their talent, without their ability to bring the music to the rest of the country, where is music going to go? Obviously my mother taught me all the technique that I knew for most of my life and she taught me to appreciate music and to really enjoy playing, you know, not look at it as a competitive sport. And so I think the way my mother taught me from the beginning was very important to how I see the piano now and how I play and how much I enjoy it, so I'm very grateful. I'm very proud of her. <laughs> this is uh, for the first time in my life that I am playing that much Chopin all at once. And so it's just a different world for me. I guess you can say one of the dreams came true. <laughs> yeah. In your opinion, what is the importance of this competition? Very great importance to pianists because Chopin is the great composer for piano above all the other composers. He composed more for piano and he composed almost uniquely for piano. So for a pianist, this has very, very great importance. If the piano is a hard instrument because we don't get to carry our own around, you know. We have to practice on one and then perform on another. So I think that is probably the biggest challenge of being a pianist. Being able to adapt to your environment and to any concert hall or concert piano you have to perform on. We are in the concert hall practically near all day. And, uh, well, I know that it's very warm and very humid. Uh, in concert hall, it's very cold. <laughs> Much colder than in Poland right now. And thankfully, I started with my ballad, which gives me a little nice introduction where I don't have to be running around with my fingers. I think you just have to get into such a deep level of focus and concentration that, that you're in the present moment. I, I find that a lot of times if I make a mistake, it's because I'm thinking back or thinking forward. When you're right in the present and just letting the music flow, I, th I feel that that's when the best uh, performances are made. Very rarely does a performer ever say that the performance went perfectly well, so, you know, there are some things that I could improve on, but I think generally it went fine. I go purely for musical values, and I judge on the basis, was there poetry, was there magic? So I work much less from the technical side and much more from the emotional side, perhaps. You have to train yourself when you're practicing to feel like you can get through the piece easily. That, that's a no-brainer. You have to be able to play the piece technically. And then once you have that part figured out, it really comes from a deeper place. As long as I'm connected to that part of myself, I feel like what I want to come out will come out. I just have to trust it, trust that connection. One of the wonderful thing about most of the jury members here is that we all have performed, and so we know the difficulties of performing under strenuous circumstances. Well, I have been practicing between eight and nine hours a day for most of the years of my long life. And it isn't all talent, because there are at least two people in this competition who have far more talent than I do. But they haven't lived as many years or worked as many years, and that's the big difference. 
I feel very exhausted. And especially since our turnaround is only one day before we have to play another full concert. When we're not playing the concert, we're spent you know, six or seven hours trying a day trying to get the next concert ready. So uh, it's very taxing. After, you'll probably see me kind of decompose in front of your lens <laughs> as, the, as the competition goes on if I'm chosen. It was sort of grueling. After I found out that I had reached the second round, I was like, oh boy, I gotta go practice. I spent a good part of yesterday and the day before yesterday working on my pieces, really trying to solidify them so that they're ready for performance. Playing 45 minutes or 60 minutes or an hour and a half, it takes amounts of endurance because you're just concentrating so hard at every single moment. And if you don't concentrate, well, then it doesn't go very well. <laughs> the ultimate competitor is yourself. You compete against yourself because you want to do the best you can. It's not a perfect uh, judgment and it's very often a very subjective thing. I was actually more excited to move, move on than to get into the competition <laughs> because, well, I mean, it's kind of lame, but last time I came, five years ago, I was in the competition, I got past the first round. So I didn't want to, like, you know, feel, if I didn't pass the first round the second time, that'd be kind of like, uh, you know. I don't have a teacher now, so sometimes I feel really worried about if what I'm doing is totally wrong or, you know, if it's on the right track and so it feels good to know that at least I'm on the right track. Chopin is a very good introduction to someone that is not maybe familiar with music because Chopin goes directly to the heart. It was my grandma who got me into classical music so having her here is, must be really special for her to see that, you know, the kid who hated classical music when she tried to get me to listen to it is now here playing all this Chopin. <laughs> For the, the spirit, music brings so much. It can bring much happiness, you know. I just played the second round at the Miami National Competition and uh, it was really fun. I had a great time. I can't imagine anything more beautiful than the music of Chopin. When I play Chopin, I feel like people really listen more than any other composer. And I think it's just because there's this direct line from his music that just goes right to people's hearts. Chopin is present in all my life. I've never heard someone saying, I do not love the music of Chopin. Well, Chopin was always one of my favorite composers. From the age of 16, I have competed in some of the competitions, and for me, it is just a really special composer. It's very close to my heart. The Sonata and the Polonaise Fantasy are the latest works that Chopin has written, so it's sort of a lot more things he's trying to say in the music. In Chopin's music, there is a language that runs throughout all of his works, and so the more you know, I think, the easier it gets to learn successive repertoire. So once you've learned three waltzes, then the fourth one is that much easier. With Chopin, memorizing isn't as difficult as compared to other composers. You know, everyone can enjoy Chopin and it's very friendly to the ear. This year was Chopin year. I have an affinity for Chopin's music. I've played a lot of it, I love all of it. And so it's, I wanted to have fun with it, you know? I'm a pianist. I'm interested in Chopin. <laughs> I don't have to, <laughs> to say more than that. Any musician will know that a person who is interested in playing the piano is interested in Chopin. Anything to do with Chopin. Well, I think most pianists love and have a very deep relationship with Chopin. Um, I know that since I first was given a kiss set of Chopin when I was, I don't know, maybe eight years old, I've just adored him as a composer, and I would listen to it all night long, and my parents would be, <laughs> well, very annoyed, I'm sure. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You must be really Chopin lovers. It all dwindles down to a precious few. That's just about what we're doing this weekend with the finals coming up. We started with 19 candidates last Saturday. We're down to a precious six, and one of those six We'll be going to Warsaw in October for the international competition. That committee, by the way, thinks so highly of this North American entry that they automatically take our winner 
the first of our three candidates tonight. He hails from Durham, North Carolina. His name is Andrew Tyson, and he'll perform the E minor on the Steinway piano. I think I told you in every interview, I never expected to get this far. The point of this whole experience for me has been personal. Of course, it's wonderful that I'm in the finals, I'm delighted, but I chose the programs based on things, number one, I would like to play, or two, that I thought would go well together and make a nice program, and number three, that I thought would make for a nice performance. This lady is from Northbrook, Illinois. She's on the Steinway. Her name is Naomi Kudo. I made it to the finals, yes. I know that um, out of all my rounds, I felt most unhappy about the final, which is too bad. Would you greet Eric Zuber, our third and final candidate for today? You know, I felt the least nervous on stage today that I have all week. I felt so comfortable and I felt just relieved somehow. Being Even before I finished, while I was on stage, I just felt relieved to be out there uh, making such beautiful music. From Lansdale, Pennsylvania, Claire Wansi. Uh, of course, I'm not anxious right now, but when we are waiting for the announcements, like, you know, on stage, I will be very anxious. But I think I did my best today. So. Back on the Yamaha, please welcome from Little Ferry, New Jersey, Miss Esther Park. Just playing with an orchestra is such a blessing. And, uh, you know, to be able to communicate with all those musicians, plus the maestro, plus the audience is just uh, such a fun thing. Welcome, please, Mr. Henry Kramer. Well, I think the music I chose made me stand out because you have the variety of what he wrote in the beginning of his life to the very end of his life, and I think I like that balance. I like having that variety. ceremony. First of all, we'd like to remind you and thank you for supporting this wonderful Chopin organization that brings this uh, wonderful contest every five years and sends the winner right to Warsaw. You met her before, we'd like to bring her forth, this wonderful lady, Lady Blanca Rosenstiel, founder and president of the Chopin Foundation. We ask if she would please say a few words on this very auspicious occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to greet you at the grand finale of the 8th National Chopin Piano Competition. Today I stand here before you for the 8th time to once again applaud the young, talented American pianist. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Blanca Rosenstiel. Well, you, um, you saw the uh, finalists. Uh, let's bring them out, not with the pianos, but just by themselves. Andrew Tyson of uh, Durham, North Carolina. Naomi Kudo of Northbrook, Illinois. Here from Baltimore, Maryland, Eric Zuber. We have Claire Wansi, who you heard today, from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Ms. Esther Park from Little Ferry, New Jersey. And Henry Kramer from Cape Elizabeth, Maine. I think we're ready then. I'm going to introduce Jadwiga Gewert. I'm so excited. How quiet, how quiet. The best Mazurka prize goes to Claire Huangxi. Well, many times in my 
um, career, I felt, you know, am I doing the right thing? I think then, after I give like a concert or something, then I really feel it's still worth it because you feel like you're really sharing something with the audience. And the best Polonaise prize goes to Claire Huang Si. Well, this is definitely helping me prepare for Warsaw this competition because uh, the repertoire is all the same. This is just the perfect dress rehearsal, eight months ahead of schedule. Best concerto prize goes to Naomi Kudo. In five years, I studied a lot and learned a lot, so I think, you know, I should be a better musician at this point. The sixth prize, Henry Kramer. I mean, I love Chopin, and so that's why I've devoted this year so far to learning just his repertoire, because I, I can't get enough of it, so. Come, I'm just happy that I got to, I got to play everything that I prepared. The fifth prize goes to Andrew Tyson. What do I think of getting this far well? I know that I have a long way to go, and, um, but at the same time, it's been very fulfilling in the sense that it's been a reaffirmation of the fact that I do love performing. The jury decided not to award the fourth prize, but two third prizes. So the tie for the third prize goes to Esther Park and Eric Zuber. I am very honored to be in this process once again. There is no such thing as too much preparation. So I pretty much give it my all. I mean, I'm gonna live, you know, I'm gonna be really tired, but I'll, I'll live through the week. The second prize goes to Naomi Kudo. The nice thing that I like about this competition is that when I go out, I can't tell where the judges are seating, sitting. So, you know, I don't have to feel like I'm being judged, I guess. It just, you know, feels nice to play for an audience. First prize winner receive, receives automatic acceptance to the international competition in Warsaw in October without... <laughs> not yet. And also a 20 plus concert tour prearranged by the Chopin Foundation across the United States and abroad. And a $20,000 awarded by Mrs. Audrey Carlin in honor and in memory of Donald Carlin to be presented by Lady Blanca Rosenstein. And the first prize goes to Claire Huangzi. Well, I'm really, really happy now, and I'm so honored to have been chosen, and I will work very, very hard for this. A well, Chopin year, I can't say it's my year, because whatever I do, it won't be as great as the music he's created, but I will try to make it very successful, like with the competitions, and I'm so glad to have won this one, but I'll do my best in the next one. Hopefully in five years at our ninth Chopin piano competition. Thank you. Good night. Would I wish him for his birthday? Well, I would wish him happy birthday, right? <laughs> Dear Chopin. I wish you a happy, happy, happy birthday. And thank you so much for giving us great music. And you know, you can't really compare you to Mozart or anybody else. But uh, I have to tell you that you have soft spot in me and I like your comp compositions. And I am very happy to be part of this uh, celebration of your 200th birthday. You are an old man. Happy birthday. <laughs> if Chopin were here right now, I wouldn't really know what to wish for him. I would just want to thank him so much for giving us all this beautiful music. Well, what would I wish Chopin on his birthday? I, I, well, it's my birthday too. I actually share a birthday with Chopin. So I would say happy birthday to him. 
and I would hope he would say happy birthday to me, and then that would probably be enough for me to die right there if Chopin said that to me, yeah.